Okay everyone, today I'm going to be testing if human skin is waterproof. And I'm gonna be telling you the real reason why your hands wrinkle in water. You've most likely been told the wrong reason your entire life. So before I tell you the real reason why your hands wrinkle in water, first let me tell you the wrong reason. Most likely you've been told that the reason your hands wrinkle in water is due to something called osmosis due to your hands absorbing water because there's a lower concentration of water in your skin than on the outside. So for example, let me show you what osmosis is using a gummy bear. So my gummy bear here is gonna represent a semi-permeable membrane. So the gummy bear is full of sugar and water can come into it, but the sugar can't really dissolve out of it that well. And so that means it's semi-permeable because the diffusion can only go one way. So let me stick this gummy bear in water for a while and then we'll compare it to the size of its twin here. So watch what happens. Okay, so after soaking for about an hour, you can see the size difference of these two. So because concentrations always move from high concentration to low concentration, the water was forced to go into the low concentration of water in the gummy bear. And so it caused it to swell up. So the reason that the gummy bear swelled up is because the skin of the gummy bear acted like a semi-permeable membrane. It was able to lit in the water. But what about skin? Does your skin absorb water like that? Well, there's only one way to find out. I've heard a lot of discussion online, some people saying yes, your skin does absorb water, some saying no, it doesn't absorb water. So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm gonna weigh myself before I get in the tub, and then I'm gonna weigh myself after I soak in the tub in hot water for 30 minutes and see if I weigh any different. So last time I did the flaming propane in the tub, I had my shirt off and YouTube demonetized that video and made it age restrictive. You had to be 18 to watch it. I was fully clothed, I just didn't have my shirt on. So I figured I better leave my shirt on for this video. Apparently this body is too much to handle. Okay, first let's measure how much I weigh before the bath. <laughs> I need to lose a little weight. Let's see if this works now. One fifty six point seven. Okay, so I'm gonna soak in the tub and then I'll put this outfit back on and then I'll reweigh myself afterwards. Okay, okay we'll see you in 30 minutes. Honey, come on, come help me with dishes. Uh, can you get started on them? I'm taking a warm bath for science. 30 minutes are up. Gonna get into my other clothes, get dried off, make sure I dry all the water out of my hair, and then see how much I weigh. See if I gained any weight by absorbing water into my skin. <laughs> okay, I'm out of the tub, fully dried off, no residual water in my hair. Let's see how much I weigh on the scale now. Okay, here we go. 156.1, I weigh less by a half a pound. Weird, I didn't expect that. Yeah, 156.1, huh. That's a big difference, half a pound difference. Okay, so I lost a half a pound in the bathtub. That is really interesting and totally unexpected. I thought for sure I'd gain a little bit of weight, maybe like 0.1 or 0.2 pounds due to the water absorbing into my skin a little bit, but I actually lost weight. So I do know that after you take a bath or shower and you don't put lotion on afterwards, your skin can get pretty dry. And that's because the oil does leach from your skin. But did I lose a half a pound of oil? I doubt it. And in this bath, I didn't even have any soap in it. I wasn't scrubbing myself, so it's not like I was sloughing off a lot of skin. Another way I could have lost a half a pound is the water was kind of hot and I was sweating in there, so maybe I lost a half a pound of sweat. But that's a lot of sweat. It's not like I was just dripping sweat profusely in the water. <laughs> so is your skin waterproof? Well, the answer is yes and no. It's waterproof such that the outside water does not get down into the lower layers of your skin at all. So it doesn't actually enter your body. So yes, your skin is waterproof, but the outer layers of your skin are not so much. So is that the reason why your hands wrinkle? Well, the answer is no. 
Up until the 20th century, it was usually explained that the reason that your hands wrinkle is due to osmosis of water into your fingers that cause it to increase in volume, and that increase in volume causes the skin to wrinkle together. Dr. Smith published a paper that pretty much crushed that theory and came up with a new theory that has now been proven to be true. So the real reason why your fingers and toes wrinkle in water is because your hands and your feet have a very high density of sweat glands, higher than anywhere else on your body. And so water can easily absorb into those sweat glands. But that in and of itself doesn't cause the wrinkling. What happens is once the water's in there, it causes the concentration of salt in those glands to decrease. And that decrease in salt concentration causes the nerves around that area to fire more regularly. And that increased firing causes the blood vessels to contract. And the contraction of the blood vessels pushes the blood out of your hands and your feet and that decreased volume causes it to shrivel up like a raisin. And so your hands and your feet actually aren't shriveling due to the volume of water in your hand changing, but it's actually the volume of blood decreasing in your hands and your feet that's causing your hands to, and your feet to wrinkle like that. So in the 1930s, scientists started to discover that patients that had nerve damage in their fingers didn't get wrinkly fingers when they submerged it in water for a long time. So in order to test this hypothesis and see if it actually is a nerve response, I'm going to try numbing my hand and then submerging it in water for around 30 minutes and seeing if there's a difference in the part of my hand that was numbed and the part of my hand that wasn't numbed. So I'm going to be using a 20% benzocaine solution. This is a topical anesthetic spray. Okay. Okay, I'm going to spray liberally. Don't get my arm here, just my hand. Oh, this is going to be weird. <laughs> okay, that is liberal. Well... Okay, what better to soak my hand in than my good trusty vacuum chamber? So I'm going to go for 30 minutes in warm water. Ah. Now I kind of just need to pee. Okay, so all my fingers are about the same wrinkliness. They've already started to unwrinkle a little bit, but there's no real difference between the side that had the numbing and the side that didn't. And I think I know why. Okay, so the reason that I didn't show a difference on my hand being wrinkly is because actually it has to do with the sympathetic nervous system, not just your topical nerves. And so in order to have a difference in the wrinkliness of my fingers, I would have to have my sympathetic nerve clipped but I'm not quite willing to go to that level to prove this theory. So your hands don't get wrinkly due to water absorption or water leaving your body at all. It's actually due to a nervous system response. It's actually a pretty cool response when you think about it because your hands have to be in the water for a long time in order for the response to take effect. If they're just wet for a few seconds, the response doesn't happen. So they have to be soaked in there for a while and then the response happens. And they hypothesize that that nerve response is in order to make us have better grip in wet conditions. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you're not subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when my latest video's out. Let me know if you have any questions or comments and I'll try to get to them in the comment section and I'll see you next time.